What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I wanna to go over a buyer's guide for the BMW M3. This is a very popular performance oriented sedan from BMW. We get to drive and review them a lot because viewers like to see the different options available for this sedan. Now I'm borrowing this from 704 Exotic, so definitely take a look at their website. They're always getting in some very cool inventory. That link is down in the description. But today, let's go over the different options, the generations for this M3, see where it's come to where it is now with this latest generation behind me. We have a lot to go over, a lot of pricing. So if you're in the market for a family sedan, but you also want performance, is the M3 the best option for you? Well, hopefully you can get a better idea once we go over everything you need to know about this BMW. So let's start off with the history for the BMW M3. There's a lot to go over since the introduction of this vehicle, and it goes all the way back to 1986. This was considered the E30 for the BMW M3. It was first introduced as a coupe, and then BMW did offer it as a convertible as well. This was powered by the S14 four-cylinder with 195 horsepower paired to a five-speed manual transmission. Now you'll notice that the horsepower is, has significantly changed over the years, so pay attention to that as we go over the rest of the, these generations. Now for the E30, there were also some special additions. There was an Evolution 1 as well as an Evolution 2, a Sport Evolution, a Revaglia, as well as two other trim levels. BMW also made an M3 pickup truck, which I had no idea, between 1986 and 2012. For the next generation for the BMW M3, that was considered the E36. That went from 1992 until 1999, and this Model M3 had three different versions. You could get a coupe, you could get a sedan, or you could get a convertible as well. This was powered by the S50, which was a straight six cylinder, and it was the first to use a six cylinder for the BMW M3. Obviously being the second generation, went from a four cylinder to a six. This pumped out 282 horsepower, and then during those years, BMW had a facelift for the E36, and that bumped the horsepower up to 316. Now you could also get a manual transmission or an automatic for this, and just like the first generation, there were a few different special editions, including the M3 GT, there was an M3 Evolution, and then the M3 Lightweight. Now, interestingly enough, for the US spec for this BMW E36, the horsepower was 240, and for the US market, that wasn't released until 1995. So the E36 had been around for a few years in different markets, and then it came to the USA, they detuned it slightly, which was interesting to see. We have different regulations, of course, but you could always do a tune and get that power back. And then for the next generation, the E46. This ran from 2000 until 2006, and this was a coupe or a convertible, so there was no sedan for this model. This had the S54 straight six with 338 horsepower, manual transmission or automatic as well. And then for the US market, 333 horsepower. So again, detuned for our market. And there were also two special editions. We had the CSL as well as the competition. And then moving on to the next generation for the BMW M3. This is where it gets very interesting. This is when the E90, E92, and E93 were available. This was between 2007 and 2013. And in that exact order, each of those stood for the sedan, the coupe, and the convertible. So the E90 was the sedan, 92 was the coupe, and then 93 was the convertible. This had a four liter V8. You could get a manual transmission or an automatic. 414 horsepower for all of these. And there were several different special editions that you could get for this model. Now let's fast forward to the F80, which was 2014 to 2019. This was a sedan only. So from here on out, the M3 was only available as a sedan. BMW decided in 2014 that the coupe and the convertible would be rebranded as a four series. I'm not exactly sure why they decided to do that, but we do have the M3 now as a sedan. You can get the M4 as the two-door vehicle if you'd like. You can get the M4 in a coupe or a convertible. Now, the F80 was powered by the S55, which was a twin turbo straight six. Horsepower ranged between 414 and 425 horsepower. You could also get a manual or an automatic transmission. And again, you had several different special editions. 
that you could choose from for this generation. And now that brings us to the latest generation for the BMW M3, what you see behind me. We have the G80 and the G81. So that is for the non-competition and the competition models as there's two available. This is powered by the S58 Turbo Straight 6. So it did go back to the six cylinder. The V8 was only available in that previous generation for the F80. You can get an automatic or a manual for the latest generation. It is going to differ. The base version basically allows you to have the manual. The competition that you see behind me is only available with the automatic. Horsepower now has been increased to just over 500. So from the very beginning, slightly under 200 horsepower, now we have just over 500 for the highest trim level available. So let's move on to the pricing now for the BMW M3. Let's first start off with the G80 and the G81. So a starting MSRP for the G80, which is the base version for the M3, starts right around $76,000. And of course that can climb up to the mid $90,000 range, just depending on the trim level that you go with, of course, and the options that you spec yours for. Now, if you're looking for a used G80 or G81, I'm finding them in the price range of $70,000 or more. So they are still holding their value very well for a few years old with very low mileage. I did look up a 2015 M3 just to see a little bit older of a version. And with 37,000 to 100,000 miles, it looks like they're ranging between 30 and $40,000. So about a 10 year difference and you can see the pricing is obviously much lower. We'll see how the pricing for this generation M3 is in five, six, seven years. They'll probably still hold their value pretty well with some lower miles. So now the biggest topic that I wanna cover is the reliability, maintenance, recalls, any issues with the BMW M3. Honestly, I didn't find too much, but what I did find was the largest recall BMW had was in 2009, and the M3s accounted for 3% of that recall. They had some issues with airbags, electrical, transmission, there was battery brakes, engine, and frame. Now I don't have a number for this other than the 3% of M3s that were affected, so it doesn't look like it was that big of a deal for the M3 in general. In the latest years, BMWs have become more reliable. Now I've never owned a BMW M3. I do currently own an X5 at the moment, and there are some software updates and glitches that these vehicles do have, but overall the reliability seems to be pretty good. If you go all the way back to the first, second, third gen M3s, some of the older cars, obviously there's going to be some issues that will arise. Now I made a separate video on BMW reliability. So if you wanna check out that, I went into a lot more stats and details on everything that you need to know about BMW. I will link that video down in the description below. I will also have a video to this exact M3 competition. So if you wanna see all the specs and how this drives, check out that separate review video as well but I didn't find all that much for the M3, which is of course good to know. One thing to note too with the BMWs, a lot of people don't own them that long either. So a lot of the issues that I talked about in that separate video was well over 100,000 miles. So if you're looking for some lower mile vehicles, you're going to own it for a few years. That's when you obviously won't have any issues with it, but if you're going to own them long term, there are some things that you will need to know once you break 100,000 miles. Now, like I said, I've never owned an M3, so I don't have uh, maintenance or insurance, but with my X5, insurance is very affordable. Maintenance is an oil change once a year, so honestly, it's not really that expensive. Depends on your age, your region, driving history, so obviously that is going to differ between people. So behind the wheel now for the M3, this is such a fun vehicle to drive. And what I love about it is not only is it practical being a sedan, so you can put in other people, of course, you can put your kids in the back, you have the trunk space too, but you also have an incredibly performance oriented vehicle. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can get the manual transmission, which is a six speed, or you can get this eight speed automatic. Honestly, they are both very fun. I've been in the manual. Personally, I would buy the manual just because I think it's cool to have the manual sedan, but I also love driving manuals. But you can't go wrong either with this automatic. You have different uh, adjustments here that you can make for the transmission. So you can have it shift very quickly. You can have it shift slowly for normal everyday driving. So with this particular model, you can set this up to be incredibly smooth for the different types of driving that you're doing. 
but this is just such a fun sedan to drive. Like I've said, I've been able to drive and review a lot of the M3s. They are my top pick for a family vehicle that gives you the performance of having basically a sports car with that added practicality. So if you're like me and you want a performance oriented vehicle, you don't want to give that up, but you need that practicality. It's such a good blend. You really forget that you have three seats behind you because you can have so much fun with this car. It drives so smooth. It's very comfortable too. You have some good tech. You can get a lot of different options, obviously, depending on what you would like, of course. So this one's not fully loaded, but we do have a very nice interior. And as far as any negatives go, like I said, I drive them so often. I own an X5 myself, so I'm not trying to be biased towards them, but with the amount of seat time that I have combined with all of the M3s that I've reviewed, I don't see any negatives to this vehicle. It is expensive, but other than that, there's a lot of expensive vehicles out there. For the money, I don't think you can go wrong with the performance, the tuning capabilities, the modifications that the BMWs have from very from a lot of aftermarket manufacturers. If that's something that you're looking to do, you have a lot of options to go with. So, but just driving in general, I don't see any negatives either. It's very comfortable, smooth, well refined as a BMW should be. It's not crazy loud either for being the M version, but you can fix that, of course, with an exhaust. Still has a, a good tone to it, and the acceleration is unbelievable. I've never done the full potential for the M3, but this is just, this is a sweet, sweet vehicle. I'm excited to get one at some point, just because it ticks every box for me. So if you, if you are in the market for a performance oriented sedan, obviously there are several options out there that you can go with. But to me, I think this is, is one of the best options that you can get for sure. So definitely take a look at one. If you want a sedan and you want that performance, you can also drift in the BMWs as well. There's some uh, settings that you can go into for your drift analyzer and things like that. So if you want to take this to the track or do some kind of performance style driving like that or drifting or anything, you have the option to do it in your M3. So you get the luxury feel and then you get the performance aspects and characteristics all in one with a very practical sedan. So that will wrap it up for the uh, buyer's guide for the uh, BMW M3. Again, we have several review videos on the, of the M3s, including the one that I am driving today. Comment down below if you have any other questions that I may have missed. I do have quite a lot of experience with these vehicles, aside from owning one. But let me know your thoughts. If you own one, share us uh, your experiences with it and let us know how you enjoy this sedan. But again, huge shout out to 74 Exotics. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.